Hello families and thank you again for making it to our third installment of our Dragon Lair Cafe. Tonight we are going to be taking on a slightly different topic. We are going to be talking about um, some of the dangers of vaping and e-cigarette use and sharing some information um, for families about um, <laughs> about really just uh, it's better for me to read the description. So, um, teen vaping and e-cigarette use, uh, with that increasing, it's important for parents to know what is, uh, what it is, and understand how it can affect their adolescent. This presentation will discuss what vaping is, the health risks it presents to adolescents, the current landscape of teen vaping, and what parents can do to address the issue. Our presentation t tonight will be uh, done by Diana Valdez, a crosswords, a crosswords, crossroads counselor, <laughs> who is who is helping me out. Obviously, I need a little tonight with the with the presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to her. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Okay, thank you, Vince. I've never been called a crosswords counselor. I was called uh, last year a, a train train track counselor. <laughs> then nice. a, student got, a student got confused with crossroads, so um, but never crosswords. But thank you anyway. Very so, welcome. Hello, <laughs> hello, families. Um, thank you for being here this evening. Um, as Vince uh, mentioned, my name is Deanna Valdez, and I'm the crossroads counselor at. Um, Valley High School, and I actually also serve um, the feeder middle schools and then also e Academy, which is one of our magnet schools. Uh, so what the Crossroads Counselor is, is it's the Drug and Intervention Prevention and Intervention Counselor. So I work with students who either themselves are having um, drug and alcohol issues or maybe have a family member or a friend who is having, having drug or alcohol issues and trying to manage um, that relationship and all everything that comes with that. So I work with uh, students in a prevention, a preventative way. So I'll go into classrooms and do presentations or do presentations such as uh, this one tonight, um, or I'll go, um, you know, we'll set up assemblies, things like that. I also work with students uh, individually in an intervention uh, way, again, if they're referred to me by staff or by parents. Um, I also work with students who violate the drug or alcohol policy. So if they, you know, are caught on campus or at a, a district uh, school function, then um, I work with with students after they've had the discipline. So I wanted to talk to um, you all tonight about vaping because it actually is um, our number one uh, violation uh, for uh, actually in the district is, is vaping. So I want to talk a little bit about what it was. Um, and how it's affecting our youth. So we'll cover, um, as Vince mentioned, what vaping is, how vapes and e-cigarettes work, uh, vaping and youth, kind of the, you know, what the landscape looks like now. And then we'll end with what parents can do and uh, resources. So what exactly is vaping? So actually up until last year, I was um, a regular counselor, an academic counselor. And last year I started as a crossroads counselor, so I learned a lot and I really didn't know what uh, vaping was or what e-cigarettes were. I didn't know if they were the same thing. Um, so I really, I really had to learn a lot, but um, what vaping is, and this is a, a recent, I'll pull this down, a recent um, definition that I pulled off the internet. And it says that vaping is the inhaling of a vapor created by an electronic cigarette or also called an e-cigarette or an e-cig or other vaping device. Um, e-cigarettes are battery powered smoking devices. They have cartridges filled with a liquid that usually contains nicotine, flavorings, and chemicals. The liquid is heated into a vapor, which the person inhales. That's why using e-cigarettes is called vaping. So that's a basic definition. Um, there is actually in this definition, a misconception um, that is, um, that we're going to try to dispel tonight. Um, and that is that e or that um, vaping actually produces vapors, which is um, a, actually a myth because um, it's not actually a vapor, it's an aerosol. So actually the name of it, vaping, you know, leads us to think that it's a vapor. 
But the difference between the vapor and the aerosol is that the vapor, you know, evaporates and dissipates. Whereas an aerosol, if you're familiar with aerosol, and I don't know if any of you, um, I might be dating myself, but back in the, you know, 90s, we used the um, Aquanet hairspray, and that came in an aerosol can. Um, so that is, that's what an aerosol is. It's actually little tiny particles of chemicals um, that, you know, create droplets and that stay in the air and land on surfaces. Um, so it's not really a vapor. Um, it's actually an aerosol. And so here is kind of the inner workings of an e-cigarette or a vape. Um, so it has three main parts. It has the battery, and so it's a, recharge, it's a rechargeable battery. And it's a lithium battery, the same that is in a cell phone. And then it has the vaporization chamber, as you can see here. And this is the heating device. So these are the coils that get hot, and they um, heat up the e-juice, or e-liquid is what it's called, um, that is put into the cartridge. And so this part here is um, the cartridge, and or they cart, the kids call them carts, um, and that contains the liquid. Again, the e-juice um, or e-liquid is what it's called. Over here on this side, we have another, another um, image of, of what the inside of it looks like. There's different variations. Um, but this is, uh, these are the main components of any of the e-cigarettes or vapes that you would see. Uh, this image shows, sorry for the, the bad picture, there's um, some reflection going on there, but um, these are some of the paraphernalia that has been collected um, at Valley High School, just to show you kind of what they look like. So here in the middle, these brightly colored um, items, those are called puff bars. Those have become um, pretty popular just recently um, because you know they're brightly colored they have you know any flavor you can think of so those are the puff bars right below are the um, jewels you've probably heard of jewels before um, and then here to the left are some bigger again these are the vape they call them vape pens um, this these parts right here I don't know if you can see me pointing um, would be attached and those are the carts or the cartridges where you put the e-juice. And then over here on the right are some, of uh, again, some variations of an e-cigarette. Um, up here in the very right-hand corner, you can see they first started out actually looking like cigarettes. Um, so it looked like a regular cigarette. Um, here I tried to show some of the packaging. You can see here this one. Uh, we'll talk in a few slides about how um, the advert, you know, how the items are advertised, advertised to be able to um, show or to be able to attract uh, younger users. So this one kind of has some cartoons on it. Um, these bottles here are the e-juice. So this is what the e-juice comes in and looks like. Again, um, different flavorings, and we can talk about, or we'll talk about that in a little bit. So these are, you know, we've had years and years, um, you know, of cigarettes and being able to study what's in cigarettes, being able to study what's, um, you know, in smoking and what, um, what are the long-term and short-term effects of smoking. Um, and so this is what is in, um, what chemicals have been found to be in regular cigarettes, right? So there's over 30 here. Um, but what we're finding is that many of the same chemicals are found in the vapes and the e-cigs. So, you know, we have the nicotine, of course, the flavorings, um, the glycerin, which is what, what uh, research medical studies are showing is actually what is um, affecting the lungs and causing the lung damage. Um, there's the tin, there's nickel, lead. Now, a lot of these are um, in the e-juice or in the e-liquid when it's manufactured, but then a lot of them, a lot of these chemicals are created when the e-juice is, is, um, is heated. And so, um, again, we know that many of these are carcinogens causing cancer, um, and when, you know, when e-cigarettes were first um, produced and manufactured in the early 2000s, um, you know, they were produced to help cigarette smokers quit smoking. Well, what we found or what we found is that it didn't actually help them quit smoking. Many quit smoking, but then they stayed 
um, smoking the vapes and the e-cigs. So, um, again, we, you know, it was, it was created to solve a problem, but it's actually creating a problem because, uh, the big tobacco manufacturers are, um, wanting to find, you know, a younger generation or younger, um, younger people to buy their product, um, because they know the cigarette smokers, you know, are getting older. And so they, um, are targeting a younger generation. So there are dangers of um, what's called third-hand smoke. So we know all about second-hand smoke. We know that, you know, it's the smoke that a smoker blows out after, you know, they've inhaled and that we can be harmed, you know, from second-hand smoke if we are in the room with a um, smoker. But what we're finding with the e-cigs and the vapes is, is the idea of third-hand smoke, which isn't actually really smoke. but um, third hand smoke. And so what that is, is it's, you know, the, the aerosol is, is blown out. And then because it's not a vapor and it doesn't dissipate and, and, you know, evaporate, those tiny particles land on the surfaces. So they'll land on, you know, the couches or pets or people. And so um, those are dangers that we didn't necessarily see with um, the secondhand smoke and the cigarettes. So that's kind of all about, um, just kind of in a nutshell, um, what e-cigs and what vaping is. And so now we're going to look a little bit about um, vaping and how it affects youth and how, um, and what the, again, what the kind of the landscape is with adolescents and teens and vaping and e-cigs. So again, we talked about, or I talked just a little bit about um, how manufacturers and big tobacco companies are targeting youth. And so they're doing it very um, explicitly. You know, they are um, using advertisements like this that use bright colors, um, use younger, um, you know, hip looking, um, cool uh, people. And um, so they really are targeting a younger audience. You know, even the flavoring, um, we're seeing that the flavors really attract. Again, there's sweet flavors, fruity flavors, um, cereal, you know, cereal flavor, um, flavored flavors. Um, so this are, these are some of the statistics. So seven out of 10 middle and high school students who have currently used tobacco have used a flavored product. So the e-juice um, can come, again, in different flavors. A lot of times, Many uh, you think that they're not, you know, that they're just using an e-juice that just has a flavoring, um, although many times it does have many of those chemicals that we saw in the previous slide. So in 2018, uh, the CDC did a survey on tobacco product use in, amongst high schoolers, and it found that e-cigarettes had surpassed uh, the use of any other of tobacco in any other form. So pipe tobacco, hookah, smokeless tobacco, cigars, and regular cigarettes um, were all under 10%, whereas e-cigarettes was 20.8%. And this, again, was two years ago. And, um, you know, we've only seen an increase in the use. So that would probably be even higher today. And then uh, the FDA also did um, some studies in a survey, and it was um, very alarming that in 2018, we found that there was a 78% increase in the use among high school students from 2017 to 2018. So um, going from 11.7% of um, youth or of high school students who had said that they had um, used e-cigarettes e or were using e-cigarettes, um, and then 48% increase in the middle school. So 3.3 uh, said that they used e-cigarettes in 2017 at, um, up to 4.9% in 2018. Again, this is a couple of years old, so the data would probably show an even higher rate um, at this time. And um, so close to home, um, so the youth, um, there's a survey that's put out, I don't know if it's every year or maybe every few years, um, it's called the Youth Risk and Resiliency Survey. And so what it is, is it's a um, survey that is sent out um, to teenagers and adolescents and asks, asks different questions about, um, you know, drug use, 
um, sexual activities, um, alcohol use, things like that. So risky actions and behaviors. Um, so this, the one in 2017 for New Mexico showed that New Mexico high school students had a higher rate of e-cig use than um, the United States. So birth, both uh, current use and then also if they had ever used it before, um, you know, maybe just like a one-time try. So, and then also in middle school students, 10.9% uh, currently used and 23.4 had ever used an e-cig. Again, this was back in 2017. Um, so rates today are probably even higher. So the increase is most likely due um, to the fact that um, these big tobacco companies are are making devices that are e that are more discreet. They're easier to hide, um, you know, from parents even to to use. Uh, we are seeing students actually use you know jewels or e cigs um, where they can hide them and then actually just use them in class. Um, so it's it's very alarming. But again, we see a high a higher use, and it, again, probably is because. Uh, first, it's easier to access and then also easier to conceal. The other thing is that um, the salt-based um, versus the free-based nicotine. So here on the left are, is the jewel, and it's a salt-based nicotine. And what salt-based means basically is that it's more concentrated. So it's kind of like, you know, those packets of Kool-Aid where it's just the concentrate and you have to add all this other stuff to actually make it taste good. Um, well, that's what these salt-based um, nicotine items are. So they just pack more of a punch. So um, youth are actually getting more for their money um, when they use the salt-based. And so, um, again, we're seeing a higher, um, higher use because, you know, we're, they're, they're getting more nicotine um, at one time. This image just shows um, kind of the equivalency. So one pack of cigarettes, of course, equals one pack of cigarettes. There's about eight milligrams per cigarette of nicotine. So one pod, so that's that one little um, device that was shown in the previous uh, slide. One jewel pod has 0.7 milliliters, and that's about 5% nicotine by volume, which equals about one pack one whole pack of cigarettes. Uh, this other brand called Fix, so a Fix pod equals about two packs of cigarettes, and then the Swarin um, equals about uh, three packs of cigarettes. So again, it's a higher level of uh, nicotine. Um, so just, um, again, another, uh, more studies that were done we're finding that teens use e-cigarettes uh, mostly because friends or family, you know, they'll see the, the, a family member um, or a friend using it. And again, it be marketed that it's safer. Um, availability of flavors such as mint, candy, fruit, or chocolate. Um, again, these fruity flavors, uh, sweet flavors that are more appealing to teens and to youth. Uh, mango and mint, by the way, are the top two uh, uh, most popular flavorings. And then um, there's also, again, that belief that because it's a vapor, which it's not a vapor, but thinking that it's a vapor, that it's less harmful than other forms of tobacco, such as cigarettes. And so what we're finding is that um, e-cigarettes are kind of that gateway to actual cigarette use. So we're seeing that, um, you know, it's kind of flip-flopped um, from its intended use, right? So cigarettes, smokers uh, were, you, uh, you know, when they were first coming out, were using e-cigs and vapes to quit smoking um, or intending to quit smoking. But what we're finding is that uh, youth are starting to, you know, with e-cigs or vapes. And then again, because maybe because of cost, um, moving to regular cigarette smoking. So it's kind of like that bridge um, from e-cigs and vapings to regular cigarette smoke smoking. So what can parents do 
um, parents and adults, um, caregivers. Um, the biggest thing is, again, and, you know, probably why you're here, but it's to learn about vaping. You know, what are the types? What is it? What, what do they look like? Um, and, you know, how, how do they work? So just being really knowledgeable of that, again, for me, it was a big eye opener and, and um, you know, to know how they worked and what they were. Um, and also um, to have a conversation, you know, when you are um, talking to teens or to your adolescents about, um, you know, about vaping or just even drugs in general, you know, we know that we get concerned and sometimes we get upset and it's easy to, you know, have an argument and confront confront them, but really having, you know, having that knowledge, first of all, and then just having a conversation again, not condoning the behavior and not condoning, you know, what they, you know, what they're doing, but, ha but being empathetic for, um, why they are doing it. You know, most of the students that I see tell me that they are uh, vaping or smoking because it helps them calm down, that it helps them not feel so stressed. Um, that helps them focus. And so, you know, having empathy and really trying to understand that that's why they're trying, you know, maybe it's again, not the healthiest and the best solution, but the, of why they're, tr why they're um, maybe vaping or smoking. So having a conversation about that, um, knowing who your teens friends are and who they hang out with, again, just being um, involved and up to date about who, you know, who they're hanging out with, if they're older, you know, friends, if they're, you know, who have access to um, these things. And then again, having ongoing conversations. And then the last thing, which I think a lot of parents forget is that um, as parents, uh, we still are the number one influence on what our teens think and believe, you know, oftentimes just because um, teens, we know, you know, are, are at that time, um, becoming independent and, uh, you know, being more influenced by friends and people their age, we think that we still, you know, that we as parents or adults don't have that influence. But studies have shown that parents actually are still the number one influence on um, their children at that age. So here are some um, resources. On the left here, I have some um, information, uh, crisis lines. Again, just um, I like to give students these and our uh, adolescents, um, I like them to have these resources. Again, a lot of times uh, students are using drugs or alcohol or vapes or smoking, again, to cope with, you know, big feelings or stress and or challenges that they have going on. And so sometimes, you know, just talking um, to people if they're really in crisis can be helpful. And then here on the right hand side, if you want more information about vaping, and I actually did provide a document um, from this website, it's a parent toolkit that gives information on vaping specifically. And then a lot of this information was, was pulled from drugfree.org, which also has a lot of resources specifically for parents and caregivers. Um, I'd like to give these um, to students also two really great resources um, that are specifically targeted toward youth. So the first is the Quit Start app. So this is actually a free app that's made specifically for teens. They just can download it um, to their phone. They answer a few questions and then it um, tells or it, it sends tips on, you know, how to quit or decrease uh, vaping. And smoking, it sends little motivational, you know, texts daily, um, gives little challenges. So that's a really great app. And then um, if you don't want to download or if they don't want to download an app, there's this um, program where you can text I quit to 47848. And it's kind of the same thing. It will send um, advice and tips on how to quit or how to decrease vaping or smoking and then send like little motivational and inspirational texts, um, you know, periodically to the, to the person. And that's also free too. So with that, I will um, end with any questions or thoughts. I will also have my contact information up here. Uh, you can email me again. I'm at Valley high school or you can, um, text or call. This is a Google voice number and you can reach me at either of those um, contact information. 
Awesome. Thank, thank you for the presentation. We did end up getting a, a couple questions from our form that's linked in the description of the video. Okay. Our first question is from Gail. Her question is, is the artificially created nicotine more dangerous than the nicotine derived from tobacco leaves? Okay. So good question, Gail. Um, and actually the nicotine, nicotine is nicotine. So it's actually the same thing. So it's the same chemical. Um, of course, in the e-cig and the vape, um, it's in, you know, the liquid form, the e-juice, right? It's in the e-juice um, and it's heated up and it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's inhaled and used that way. Whereas with the tobacco, it's, it's um, ni you know, the nicotine is in the tobacco. And so it's, it, so it's basically the same thing. It's just um, ingested or taken in differently. I hope that answered your question. Um, our next question is from Mary Rose, and this actually came in during the presentation. Okay. Um, her question is, is vaping causing more complications with COVID? Yes. So actually, um, and so very good question. So what we know um, about vaping is that, um, you know, it's actually, we don't know as much as we know with regular cigarettes. Regular cigarettes, right, we've had you know, years and years to be able to study and research. And so we know, you know, pretty much how it affects the body, um, how it's, you know, how it is harmful. What we're finding with, um, you know, the vaping and the e-cigarettes, we don't know as much because we haven't had as much time and we don't know the long-term effects like we do e-cigarettes. Um, but we're seeing that, you know, it affects the lungs, that, that, um, uh, there's a chemical, it's the glycerin that's in the flavoring um, that affects, you know, the lungs and the breathing. So adding that, you know, adding COVID to that um, or, you know, the, the symptoms that we're seeing with COVID, how it affects, you know, the breathing and lungs, um, we're seeing that it is being affected or, or um, effects of it increased um, with COVID. And I actually do have some, I don't know if I can maybe send them to you, Vince, and somehow get them out, but I do have some resources that are specific to vaping and COVID. Yeah, absolutely. Send me what you have, and I will include them in the online uh, accessible version of the presentation tonight. Okay. Okay. And it looks like that catches us up with the, conversa uh, the questions that were sent in for our conversation tonight. Um, okay. Did you want to end with any kind of summarizing statement about what? Yeah. Go ahead. About what it is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so again, that's what, uh, vaping, you know, that's what we know. Like I said, we're still learning a lot because it hasn't been around as long as smoking. But what we are finding again is that um, it's not um, what, you know, it, what, what it was intended to be. And we're finding that it is actually, um, you know, just as harmful, if not more harmful than, um, you know, the cigarette smoking. So um, if you, again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to um, call me or email me and we can, you know, have a conversation or I can provide more resources. Awesome. Thank you very much again for your time tonight. Uh, I want to let families know that the posted version of this video is going to include a link to the presentation that you saw tonight with the additional information um, that was shared there at the end. And if you are watching this, uh, the recorded version of this, and would have preferred to have seen it live, um, you can get quicker notifications by following the school on Twitter. Search for eAcademy K8 and you can follow us. Our announcements for our Dragon Lair Cafes will be there as well as on our website, which is right here. So academyk8.aps.edu. Go ahead and take a look at our news section. Follow us on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you again for your time tonight, and I hope you found the information presented helpful. And again, please don't hesitate. If you have any questions, email or call Deanna. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, are we done? Almost. Done? Okay.